Hi, welcome to Caring Medical. We're going to talk today about the benefits of hypermobility and what some athletes can do when they have an injury and they also have hypermobility. Dr. Special, in your practice, our practice here at Caring Medical, we see a lot of hypermobility, don't we? We see an extensive amount of hypermobility, and I don't think people really realize how much prolotherapy can benefit athletes from uh, young gymnasts all the way to um, college athletes and weekend warriors, because uh, uh, the main problem is their hypermobility sim uh, syndrome, and they also have instability of their joints. And prolotherapy is a treatment that was developed by Dr. Hackett in the 1940s that Dr. Hauser and I have been blessed to train with Dr. Hemwell, and we use the extensive Hemwell Hackett technique here at Cary Medical in Southwest Florida to um, improve people's functions and heal their function and get them back to their sports a lot, lot faster. Dr. Hackett actually was one of the first ones to actually write a paper, Dr. Special, on uh, loose jointed and closed jointed. So he just used the term loose jointed for people who have okay. loose joints. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there's benefits to being hypermobile. I mean, obviously the benefit for a swimmer is they would actually have extra extension because of the hypermobility in their joints. Like, I don't know if you ever watched Michael Phelps, but <laughs> if you actually, yeah, well, if you actually watch him in slow motion, like on YouTube, when he goes like this, you can actually see his elbow hyperextend. So the good part of hypermobility for an athlete is they have extra motion. So it does give them a biological advantage. The downside of it is because the ligament is already stretched and here I'm just gonna get an elbow. And you know the ligaments are the parts of the joint that stabilize the joint or hold the bones in place. So when a ligament gets too stretched out, you know, the body doesn't get it back to its normal length and normal strength. So that's where prolotherapy plays Absolutely. a major role. And what happens is, uh, like Dr. Hauser just said, um, these ligaments, and they can be all over the body. They can be from, um, they can be from the knees to the back. And um, the thing of it is they don't heal properly. So they're in a state of okayness. They may do in and out of pain, no pain. And, and that's not good. They may have some physical therapy, which may be beneficial for a while. They may do some muscle building. But what we do here at Cary Medical, we get to the core problem. They don't want to just be in a state of okayness. They want to be in the thrive zone, especially for athletes. And even your everyday factory worker, they want to thrive and be well. And that's what we're here to get them back uh, to a state of wellness um, ASAP as soon as possible. Can I just show sure. this? I think a spring, a spring or you know, something stretchable. This is actually a good example of a ligament. Like what's supposed to happen when an athlete runs, for instance, there's supposed to be a compressive force, a compressive mm -hmm. force. And when you have a ligament injury, like let's just say here, so let's just say on the medial side. So this a cord here is like the medial collateral ligament. So if this thing got stretched out, so ligaments have a tension in there, but they can get stretched out. So a person has a medial collateral ligament injury, then what's gonna happen is when they run, instead of there just being a compressive force, there's gonna be a rotational force. And it's actually this rotational force or shear force. You can even see that on the meniscus here that there's gonna be an extra strain on the meniscus and also on the cartilage just by a little bit of a ligament injury. So meniscuses don't just degenerate or cartilage doesn't just right. degenerate on its own. It degenerates because there's a ligament injury which uh, we call also ligament laxity or joint instability. So the treatment isn't just to, is to get the meniscus out if you've got a meniscal repair or to get a joint replacement, the treatment is to tighten that ligament. So when an athlete with hypermobility, and by hypermobility we mean that they have hypermobility all over their body. So what I tell them, you probably are similar in that, if I get an ankle sprain and I have a normal joint mobility, so if I get an ankle sprain, and this ligament lengthens, all that normally happens is my ankle will go from normal mobility to hypermobility. So I may not have pain, but if you already have joint hypermobility syndrome or the genetic disorder, which is Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, right. and you know we see a lot of that, you already have hypermobility in all of your joints. So if you get that exact same ankle sprain that I had, now you go from hypermobility to instability. And instability means that the ligaments can no longer hold the bones in the proper alignment. So then 
every time you walk or every time you do your sport, you're going to have this rotational instability. I just call it rotational instability. And that's actually what then puts extra strain on the tendon so they tear or degenerate, puts strain on the articular cartilage or the meniscus and they tear or degenerate. So the treatment then isn't like to stop your sport per se. I mean, we would like to get athletes back as quick as possible. The treatment should be just tighten the ligament, like just you know, get this, uh, get this tight, get this stable, get the joint stable, then of course the function returns. I think also, Dr. House, that was a great point. Uh, because if you look at this, this is an E joint, this is the femur, and this is the tibia. The blue is the, um, is the meniscus. So many times you'll have get an MRI, they show they'll have a little meniscus tear, but what they forget about is that the medial collateral ligament, it probably was torn as well as the medial, as well as the medial meniscus. So that's why what we do, and there's a, a, a whole bunch of tendons, there's three tendons that come down here called the pes anserinus and they get these tendon injuries as well. So what we do, if you look at someone, a complete joint, the kneecap, it doesn't glide properly. So the kneecap, the patella doesn't glide properly. People may have a tendinosis here, the medial collateral ligament. Uh, so many people here have the ACL, um, and many times, even an MRI, this is an ACL, and it prevents the, um, the, the femur from going forward on the tibia. And what happens is, well, they'll look at that and you'll have an M uh, MRI. If someone has a complete tear, that's something different. But if they have a partial tear, even a few strands, these can be rebuilt. So as well as the ACL, the medial collateral ligament, the posterior collateral on the back, um, all these tendons on the inside can be built. And usually what we do here at Carey Medical, um, we say there's some slow healers, there's medium healers, there's fast healers. But we say usually we'll treat people with prolotherapy, it means prolo means proliferant. We inject an irritant, and there's many types that Dr. Hauser will talk more about. Um, we may see people four to six sessions. The neat thing about versus surgery, there's no downtime. People leave our office and just go back to their normal activities. And that's the neat thing about this. This is a very, very safe procedure, very, very few side effects. And we've been doing both of us. We've had almost 50 years experience between both of us here, um, which is extensive. So we've seen pretty much everything that uh, uh, imaginable here. You know, folks who have joint hypermobility syndrome because they're, you know, loose all over, often they'll say, well, I don't understand, like, why my doctor didn't say that I oh, have joint instability. Like, why didn't they? I, people don't realize, like, ligaments, many of the ligaments don't show up on x-ray uh, or MRI or the various tests that doctors do. So, and I, I kind of like ligaments to the hinges on a door or on a cabinet. So what happens is, like for instance, somebody twists their knee and they get this medial collateral ligament injured and now it's stretched out and now there's rotational forces. So if I just turn this, so say they just have a ligament injury here, see how, it, see how it's putting a stress on this one? Oh, absolutely. So just like the hinge on a cabinet, if you don't tighten that, you don't screw that one hinge in. It'll be wobbly. It's going to be wobbly, but then it's going to get the next one wobbly, then the next one wobbly. So that's where you could have a very minor ligament injury, and very quickly in a month or two, especially if you still work out, then all of a sudden all the other ligaments are stretched out. So that's why you and I practice comprehensive prolotherapy, which is basically just means what you alluded to, that we'll treat all the ligaments that basically are stretched out. You know, we're not gonna, just with an MRI finding where you got a meniscal tear, go right for the meniscal tear because we know that the main stabilizers of the joints are the ligaments, it's not the meniscus. You know.